Hello everyone and welcome to another video in RangeBee's World Thunder Plane Analysis. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Spitfire Mark 16, which is a level 11 uh, British fighter. Um, again, I'm going to refer to some of the comments this plane uh, gets. A lot of people say this plane is underpowered, that is underperforming, that is blah 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 blah. Well, it's not. You have to understand that Gaijin is aiming for historical accuracy in this game, and as such are going to uh, represent planes with real-life performances and uh, maneuverability, etc. And historically speaking, the Spitfire was never a very fast plane. It was pretty quick, but uh, contemporary fighters were faster than it. And this one is not an exception. It was one of the quickest Spitfires down low. Uh, this is an LF uh, Mark 16, which is a low altitude variant of the plane. And uh, there are faster fighters than there. There are a lot of them. I mean, it's quick for a Spitfire, but it's not the quickest plane around. It's got a decent clean rate, but it's nowhere near the 109s have, because the 109s were all around clean rate. This was about both clean and turning. Um, the thing is, it was a very good fighter historically. Is it in, in War Thunder? Well, yes, it is. You just have to fly it like a, like a Spitfire, not like a 109. When I see a 109 flying like a Spitfire, I always say in my videos, look at that guy, he's trying to fly like a Spitfire. And that's the wrong way to fly a 109. Well, if you try to fly the Spitfire like a 109, it's going to be the same. I mean, this is a Spitfire, this is not a 109. But enough of the crappy chatter and let's talk a little bit more about the plane. The first thing you'll notice about this plane is that it has clipped wings. Uh, this was a modification done to uh, low-level Spitfire's variants to try to match the roll rate of the German planes, particularly the 190. It was never uh, up to the point of equaling the roll rate of a B uh, Focke-Wulf 190, but at least it helped a lot. The Spitfires weren't good rollers, especially at high speeds, they were pretty slow and in roll rate. But by clipping the wings and uh, by leaving the ailerons exactly at the edge of the wing and changing the wing shape, uh, they actually mm, allowed for a much better roll rate. This plane rolls pretty well. It's not the roll rate uh, master the 190 is, but it's very useful. Um, if you fly in cockpit view, it's going to be a huge bonus for you that it has a bubble canopy. And that's really, really nice. Uh, it's got a Merlin uh, 66 uh, engine, well, the American variant, which is the um, uh, Packard built American Merlin 266. Um, I want to mention one further thing about this plane and from an historical viewpoint. The Spitfire Mark 16 and the Spitfire Mark uh, 9 historically were exactly the same. The only difference was the engine. The engine was built according to American standards and with different tolerances and different measurements. So we, while basically it was the same engine producing the same power, weighing almost the same, etc., uh, the parts from an American built Packard weren't usable in a British built Merlin. So to avoid confusion and to avoid uh, the logistic problems of trying to use uh, one engine part in another uh, non-compatible engine of a British built plane, for instance, this plane received a new, totally new Mark denomination. But basically, basically this is a Mark 9. I mean, the Mark 9 and the Mark 16 only have that difference, the engine. The engine is American built. Uh, so what you are looking at here is also, it's not just a Mark 16, it's also an LF Mark 9 which uh, flew around 1944. Um, it's a specialist, uh, uh, a specialist of low altitudes. This plane performs the best under 500 meters, 5,000 meters, sorry. Above that, it's still very good, but it's, um, it had an engine that was finally tuned for low engine, perfor uh, low level performances. Uh, it's an energy fighter with secondary turning ability. It's not as good as a turner as the previous Spitfires because it has a smaller wing. By quitting the wing ticks here, what they achieved was to increase roll rate but decrease turn rate. This goes to prove how important roll rate is in a fighter plane. Um, 
so try to fly it as an energy fighter uh, using energy using a lot of the vertical using the acceleration this plane accelerates pretty well and climbs pretty well um, just try to um, use your maneuverability to shake off um, higher enemies and use your energy to kill lower enemies so all around this is a very very good fighter as for the costs is 8,800 lions, which is pretty cheap for a level 11. And as for the weapons, it has a couple of Spanos uh, cannons and a couple of uh, Browning 50 cals. Um, these weapons are actually effective, but the problem is that now and then they tell to troll you. But let's say 80% of the time they get the, 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 mission, the job done. The other 20% you are left uh, staring at the screen saying, saying what the hell why did that guy did not come down but still they are it's a pretty good combo the 50 cals uh, do have hitting power at close range uh, against enemy planes but also are very good for ground strafing for the latest part of the mission where there are no enemy fighters around and you are just derping around destroying ground targets the 20 millimeters hit pretty hard but remember that they are in the wings. You want to set proper um, convergence and use it. Um, individually speaking, these uh, cannons are not as powerful as the MG151 of the German 3. Uh, because the German uses Minengeisos rounds, which are extremely hard hitting. These weapons, one by one, don't do as much damage as a, a German 20mm. But if you hit at convergence, you are hitting with two 20 mm cannons, and then yes, you are doing a lot of damage. Um, uh, actually, I mean, th the rest of the plane is almost the same as the Speed uh, Speedfire Mark IX, which you already saw. And um, the difference is worse turning, better roll rate, much better performance in the vertical, and higher top speed. Doesn't mean this plane is a hot rod, which is not, but still it's got a higher top speed. Higher top speed. Um, and again, I know people are going to they are going to hate it that are going to hate this. Uh, if you think this plane doesn't do very well in the game, it's not a plane, it's you. And uh, if you think this plane um, has not an edge or can't compete with the BF 109s and Focus 190s. Again, it's not the plane. Probably is the team you are in. the The plane single biggest drawback is that it's a British plane, and as such, it's forced to play uh, aliens in historical battles. And in historical battles, I told you this in the in a previous video, but I'm going to repeat it just in case you lost. You lost it. Um, when I uh, a week ago, I was flying the Tempest 5 in historical battles, and for three consecutive games, I found myself the highest guy around on the Allied plane, uh, on the Allied side, and it wasn't a steep, very, very high. I mean, maybe 3,000 meters. And of course, I asked the rest of the team, "What the hell is going wrong with you guys? You are all low. You are going to get raped." The answer came and was, "Why climbing? The Doras are going to rape us anyway." So that's the problem. It falls in teams that has have no spirit and don't really want to present a fight. They just want to farm ground targets and you are not going to win a lot of games by going low. Now and then it might happen. Now and then it might happen. But to win, you must go high and people don't go high in the other side. And as such, you'll find yourself being the only high guy for most of the times. And then you'll find five or six German fighters that are at your altitude while the rest of your team is down low and they are going to rape you and then they are going to rape the rest of the team. Uh, so my advice in this play, well, just don't expect teams to do very much. Just try to fly the plane the best you can and whatever, whatever. Don't care about winning or losing because most times you are going to lose. This, and, uh, unless you are flying in a squad of four, that, then things might be different, of course. But flying alone, this plane depends on the team, and all your teams usually suck. That's the thing. But well, enough of the um, chatter and in, enough of speaking about the plane. Let's see it in action. 
First of all, I have to say <coughs> that this was not the replay I wanted or had intended for this review. Actually, I have a 5 kill Speedfire 16 review um, video, but this is better. To portray the actual capabilities of this plane and to portray why uh, teams that just lose by default should never be allowed to fly historical battles. This is um, historical battles in rural when we are go where we are going versus a mass of Doras. And the highest thing we have are a couple of V17s and a P51. And well, first of all, you can see here I'm climbing at 25 degrees, uh, I'm keeping 100%. I use a web to keep the speed um, at l around 200 kilometers per hour. It's more or less the speed you want to climb in, in this plane at the game start. Uh, back to what I was saying. Um, there are no OP planes except for a few. <laughs> Namely the Boo Fighter and the Jag 19 arcade. Um, <laughs> not OP, I mean the Boo Fighter is broken. It's not that it's overpowered. It's simply that simply flies too well. But whatever, besides the point. There are no OP players. There are there is OP teamwork. There's nothing that beats proper teamwork. At game start in this game, my first phrase was I hope I didn't fall in another team of those who never claimed. They all did. To the extent of the possibilities, I mean, none of these plane, planes climbs like a 109. Uh, the B-51 isn't, isn't a good climber. The guy still was climbing. This is a good climber and I'm the highest guy in my team. But I'm seeing this is one of the best views you can get in an allied um, team at the moment. People climbing. There's a King Cobra down there who's just acting like the usual uh, ally f pilot in this game who, who is going for the grand targets and is going to die like a moron but well, I mean, if he wants to do so, well, he's welcome but the rest of the team is climbing is going to put a fight we all know there are a lot of Doras in the other team we all know this is going to be a very hard game because we don't have planes of the same level but we still are willing to try and we are still in to fight and we are still in to teach them a lesson if we can and as and if they win well gg for them they they flew better okay they have better planes but whatever if they win it's because they did better not because my team was full of devs who didn't even bother trying to win the game uh so yeah, I mean, this is both an analysis of the plane. This is an amazing, amazing plane. This is both an analysis of, uh, analysis of the plane and uh, an analysis of why allied uh, teams usually fail. Because I mean, this came to the to the closest you can imagine. This was a this this had. An incredible ending. You are going to see that. I mean, it's it's totally something you would never expect from the way the uh, game was going. But even th with the end, taking in account, this is an amazing game, and this is probably one of the maybe not the best teams I have played in Allies. I have flown with guys of the 303, I have flown with guys of squadrons who were very very good. Maybe quality wise they weren't the best, but at least they were willing to fight. And they were willing to win. And they were willing to do the stuff required to win. So first contact is a much lower focus than any, but I see down there, back there, there are a lot of planes that are at our altitude. So I'm telling the people, I'm going for them. Screw the lower flow of focus one enemy. That guy is not a problem for now. We have to deal with the higher enemies first. <coughs> and I'm telling them, guys, uh, higher enemies first. We see a couple of crashes there. Uh, Wellington has crashed. One of the enemy fighters has crashed against our B-17, I think. But, well, look at this. I am at 5,000 meters and most of my team is at 5,000 meters. I can tell you this is 1 in 10, maybe, games that this happens. 
So, well, right now I'm telling I'm going for the 109 because it's the most obvious target, it's the highest one I can see. But soon I'm going to change plans because this pops up Emmy for them, Dora, Dora, Dora. And I'm, I mean, there are high guys in my team, but they are behind me. So I open fire versus that Dora, who declines the head on, understandably. I mean, you don't want to go in a head on with a Dora if you can avoid it. I see he's getting himself ready for a bounce on me. And here he comes. Break turn. And as he comes by, I change the plane to include vertical. He totally misses the approach. Roll opposite. Scissor with him. But I see there's another door on me, so I change targets to defend against that guy. He's well past the point where he has uh, he can attack me, so now I can stop avoiding. This is all defensive flight, all defensive flight. <coughs> but now my team is here, and my team is at the altitude. And look at the guy back there. He's scared. He doesn't want to get in here because we are all at 4,000 meters. And now we are close fighting the Doras. And the Doras are not good close fighters, they are boom and thumbers. So, there I go, the P-51 has avoided a bounce by the 110, and of course what happens now is that the, that the Doras start flying the way they are supposed to, so that one is diving away, I'm not going to follow because I'm not going to catch, he's lower, he has dumped a lot of energy, good for me, I'm still high, and there's another uh, 190 there. And I'm going to press that guy. I am going to be on that guy 6 no matter what. Because if I turn tails, he's going to have a free hand and turning again and returning to the fight and trying to get us. If I keep on his 6, this guy is voided. This guy is not in the fight. So right now, I'm the highest guy in my team, but the rest of my team is doing a good job on the other guys. Look at that. There's a focus on any who has that. Basically, we are equalizing their superiority in Boom and Thun with our superiority in close fighting. We are refusing to fly in their terms, we are flying in ours, and the Spitfire is a perfect plane for to do that. It accelerates very well, it turns very well, can defense, uh, can, is very powerful in the defensive, can avoid very well, and can turn tables very fast. You saw that. Two Fogul Flanenis who bounced at me, uh, me, and suddenly I was on the 6. Now I give up on that guy, that guy is moving away, it's close enough. I see another focus for any, and I'm going to do the same with that guy. I have erased one in uh, D13, now I'm going to erase another one. He's coming my way. He's going for the head on and I'm not accepting it. Hi Yo-Yo. And look at that, there's already one of our team that's bouncing him. And again, I'm on his 6. And now I'm going to mess my aiming because that ah, the camera change really fucked me. But now I know I can dive behind him, so I do so. He's diving in a different uh, way. Okay, perfect with me. He's dumping all his uh, energy. I'll keep my up and try to lend a hand with those guys that are there. Take a look. Look, the other guy is almost at three top level. So another guy that has dumped most of his of his altitude and energy. Focus when I need there. And now I go aggressive. That was a good shot with good lead but out of his angle so I missed the shot. But look at that, from 5000 meters now we are down at 3 top level and they are as well. So we are denying them the ability to th dive 5,000 meters, which is a good start to kill these guys. I avoid the pass of that Dora 13, return to him, spot another one who's coming for me, barrel roll, down on him, 
And again, I'm on his six. He's faster and he's disengaging. And I'm not going to catch up. I'm not, I'm not expected to do so. The dollar 13 is a much faster plane. But what I can do is to scare him off. So I do so with a burst of machine gun fire, keeping my cannons. Oh, there's something behind me. Break turn. Reverse on him. Come up. Look at all the Doras. They are all level 14s or 15s. There's a D12 around, I think. <laughs> but we are fighting them in equal mm, terms. We are not. We refuse to give them the advantage. I totally bork and missed this shot, which is a pity because this would have been a very, very powerful bar on him. Still, come up behind him. Try to adjust for aim. Get some hits. But he's out of my reach. Well, no big worries. I have another one who has crossed me. Just a spot. He's not coming for me. He's actually going for the for the base. We have lost one P51. But look at this. We are almost equal in numbers. And they have the definite uh, superiority in quality in what regards to plane planes. This guy is using his high gear uh, climb rate to try to get energy advantage on me. This guy was a pretty good Dora driver, I can tell you that. He's not running away, he's climbing away. Because he can climb faster than me. I fire, uh, look at that, another 190 has cr uh, crashed. I fire at him still to try to take him a little bit and to force him to maneuver, but he's not Maneuvering. This guy was a pretty good pilot, I can tell you that. So this is not a battle that we are fighting in equal terms because the other team sucks. It's a battle that we are fighting in our own terms because we forced them to come to them. Of course, the Doris is still a better plane than the Spitfire 16. And now he's coming down. I spot, distances are closing, so I come up, meet him with a fake head on, and there you go, he's avoiding. Again, a good trademark of a good Dora pilot. You don't want to give anyone a heron if you can avoid it. Unless you are forced to, of course. I mean, but he wasn't forced to. Still, he dives. And I spot he's running for home. No real sense in in dropping my altitude if, altitude if, if I go and catch him. Now he's zooming. He's trading his speed for altitude. Again, very competent Dora flying. And it's all over again. He's higher, he's climbing, I'm lower, waiting for him to bounce me, to come up, rise and meet his bones. There you go, he's again, he has aborted it. He started it, but he has spotted that I was coming up. He levels off. I fire some machine gun to scare him. And he's diving again. At this point, I know I'm not catching up. This guy is flying very conservatively. And I have two problems on my own. Look at my fuel. And I'm running low on ammo as well, so... Soon, I'm going to have to come back to base. Actually, I should have been doing right now. <laughs> but I'm still on the watch to see if that 190 actually um, maneuvers and he's doing so there's a bf109 there who is going for him and now he accepts the the head on he gets the 109 but i spot a very 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 revealing a smoke trail behind him he's damaged and now there's no more running for him and now i'm catching up and now I'm going to kill him, <laughs> basically. I use web to come as fast as I can and deal the killing blow. Waiting for him to start maneuvering, he doesn't, so I insure my hits, put a good burst on him, break off and RTV. Because I have two minutes for you. Yeah, 
little taunting on the on the chat. No more running for you. I mean, it's just taunting. I mean, the guy flew perfectly. The the one I need the one yeah so is is to be flown that way versus speed fires. I have nothing against that, but I simply wanted to poke some fun at him because well I mean I got him. <laughs> Now I'm telling my team RTV ammo and uh, it hurts because there's a Higer 190 up there and I can't engage because look at the fuel. It's blinking red. And I'm 24 kilometers away from base. And that's a lot. <laughs> that's a huge lot. Just one minute left of fuel. I could engine to 86% to cruise a bit, but still I'm burning fuel too fast. Look back. Therefore, you is engaged with the 190, but the 190 is running away. And I'm telling the F for you to come back to base because there are three enemy fighters. <laughs> in total right now or I don't know three or two in any case uh, he now is behind that 190 but if the other guy who's still alive who uh, I think is a 109 comes behind him he's going to be in a 2 versus 1 and he's going to die so I could engine now to 55% to save as much fuel as I can I'm telling the guys in the in the chat try to stay close to the to the airbase. So when we are all reloaded, we can go out and be together. Because if we go one on one, I mean one on one, those planes are better. But wins is teamwork. The F for you is now uh, saying that he has the one enemy behind him, but I'm telling. I have 27 seconds of fuel, man. I can't turn and help you. But the 190 just gave up. Turned the tails and went away. Well, so far you can see this plane is very, very good. Maneuvers very well, rolls very well, and is excellent in defensive flying. You can turn tables on an enemy fighter who bounces you very, very quickly. Um, of course, it's not as fast as the German fighters, and as such, it doesn't dominate the fight. The German fighter, if it has a good pilot, decides when to get out. So, the way to do well in this plane is by teamwork, and of course, flying to its strengths. Look at this, to 23 seconds left of fuel, I'm at 55% and slowing down very fast. I uh, At this point I'm really, really worried I'm not going to make it. There's uh, another 190 there, who's attacking the bomber, the B-217. Uh, he's killing him, so bad news. So, well, 20 seconds left of fuel. Coming and coming and coming. I'm putting the whole clip here. I'm not cutting anything because this game was simply awesome. Back to the plane, as I was saying, it has good acceleration, it has good climb rate, it turns very well. Not as good as other Spitfires. It rolls very well, better than other Spitfires, but not as good as some German planes as the Focus 190, but still it's a very good roll. Um, Fly it to its strengths, fly it as an enemy fighter, try to keep your energy up. If you are forcing into the defensive, you have seen how to avoid the bouncers. All you are required to have is a good situational awareness and a good hand at avoiding attacks. And soon you'll be in the six of the enemy who just attacked you. And if the guy doesn't know his trade, he's as good as dead. If he's good, of course, well, you've seen it. You have to wait for the proper moment to kill one. 8 seconds of fuel, no, 6 seconds of fuel, coming lower and lower in, in fuel. This was, this was very, 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 very close. So, well, yeah, I'm going to land, I'm going to be able to actually land. 
But you're going to see how do I land. <laughs> It's going to be with two seconds of fuel left. If that is not coming short, what it is? Okay, I put the plane down and yeah, I'm actually going to cut it a bit because just climbing and stuff is, is not really, really fun. So, be right back. So, up we are again. Uh, in the meantime, what has happened is that I have re refueled. But the problem is that I don't. I only have 20 minutes worth of fuel, and I'm going to go very, very quickly through it um, as I fly because I'm going to use a lot of web. Um, the the thing here is that uh, in the meantime, well, one of the enemy for Wolf and Enemies D13s has been killed by a XP38, which is a pretty awesome thing by the XP38. But the lightning actually crashed. Uh, well, the 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 focal point enemy actually crashed his dying plane against the P three thirty four. So we are down to three versus two, and I'm not feeling really well about that P fifty one that's over there. It's very very far away, and they are two, and we are three. But I'm here, and the F four U has landed and refueled, and is behind me right now. I spot uh, a one on nine crashing. Which I'm thinking is actually the guy uh, landing and repairing. So we are still um, three versus two. So we should have this. But look at the ground target count. Uh, right now I'm going to tell the P 51 that he should try to bring the enemy plane here. But I mean, I have told him twice right now that he should come back and he never uh, listened so I'm not going to bother him if he wants to fly the 190 101 he's welcome the one uh, the 109 the 190 is up there the 109 probably is repairing right now so he's one versus one he, if he wants a one versus one well I'll power for him I will try to drag the guy towards me but hey whatever flows his boat and I can tell you, as much as the other Focus 190 D13 uh, I flew against and before and I killed, as much as I say that guy was a good pilot, this one in front is not a good pilot. He's uh, someone who just uses the 190 to uh, run. Nothing else. He doesn't understand anything else. So the, the D13 actually can fly very well. Um, and not, I mean, doesn't need to run all the time, but this guy wa was a runner. <coughs> so, yeah, P51 there, the F4U is behind me. There he is, some 10 kilometers. We are pretty, pretty spaced from one another, but still, hey, we still can help each other. If something happens, the problem is the P51 there that we can't lend uh, help to because he's so far away. Right now, you you may notice I have cut the engine to 81 percent. That's because I want to save as much fuel as I can. Because I'm down to 15 minutes already, and I don't know exactly how long this is going to be. So, yep, yeah. just those guys dancing, me in a cloud. By now the 109 should have taken off, I know that, so I'm keeping an eye just in case I see him as well. Well, right now I'm within cloud cover, so I'm not going to see a lot. But the P-51 seems to have lost all the advantage, and then there is the 109. And that's going. That has to be my target. I mean, the higher uh, D13, I'm not going to be able to catch because I'm not climbing. I'm just moving in as fast as I can to lend support the faster I can. But now we are very close to the airbase, and that of course is dangerous. The focus one is there. I accelerate, use web. He's much higher, and I don't have the speed to go directly up. So instead, what I do is to 
Focus on the lower target. BF109. My plan is to go 1v1 versus that guy and uh, distract him, but I look up and I see the BF when uh, the focus is coming for me. So I have to break. I have to avoid the, the bounce and that puts me totally in the defensive versus both the 190 and the 109. I avoid the 190 and here comes the 109. So instead of engaging him in a 1 versus 1 with a pretty equal starting position, he starts with all the cards. He's got the position, he's got the energy because he was forced to avoid. So, reversal, again, reversal, couldn't engine a bit to sharpen the, the turn. Reversal, again. Now we cross head to head, again, scissors. He puts a couple shots on me, thankfully nothing very damaging. I keep on the turn instead of going reverse, uh, to a reversal because I see the one nine is coming for me. So I focus on the one nine for a second, but he doesn't capitalize on my poor situation. He simply runs away. I told you that guy is not a good pilot. Still, still the one nine is putting pressure on me, so I go down. And cut the engine. Heavy turn to bleed my speed and force an overshoot. Barrel roll. There you go, he's already overshoot. Now I keep my altitude over him, come down on him, but now, 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 now he has lost all the advantage he had. Come vertical, and I turn better, of course. So now, the advantage is on my side. I have totally taken him off. Now I have a. Ooh, that was a good snapshot, but he barely missed it. So I come back behind him, and now go the Corsair comes in, joins the fight. Try to get more hits on the guy, but no, my, my aim wasn't the best in this game, to be honest. <laughs> come up, come down, hi yo yo. And the BF109 is dead because the Corsair has killed it. Well and of course, what's. We are 3 versus 1. What's the Focus 1 enemy gonna do? Hiding knack, which I'm thinking he's going to do. Well, I have the perfect recipe for that. You are hiding knack, I go for the ack. There you go, one is dead. Ugh, already getting hits. Another one, oh no, that w that's not dead. But that one is. This one in line. Another one. And there you go, there's another one there. So, a lot of anti aircraft guns are destroyed now, but now what I spot is that the guy is not trying to cover into anti aircraft guns, he's trying to run. I spot the P40, P51 is doing exactly the same as it was. But now I notice this guy is not trying to hide in act. He's just trying to run away and try to prolong the fight as much as he can. So um, we, we lose. Because we are, look at the ground areas. 19 versus 5. And in historical battles, remember, the ground units fight each other and they kill each other. So... We are going to lose this. There's no way around it. That guy is just running away. So what I do instead is take a second look at the result screen. And I know I'm not. we are not catching up with that guy. He's just running away. He's not doing anything, which is pretty poor, because with that plane he could actually try to engage us <coughs> in boom and thumb, but not just running away. But whatever. Still, we are 3 versus 1, and we are slowly losing this. So I decided, hey guys, um, let's go for the ground targets. Let's go for the ground targets because we have <coughs> our 4 tanks, you can see them very near B, and there are artilleries in B, and the artilleries are going to smash the tanks. And once that happens, we are dead. So let's go for the ground targets and force the guy to come, force him to engage. 
<coughs> because if we are in time and we start killing the ground targets in time, we are going to win this. Or maybe not, because we are down to ground four ground targets. <coughs> but all we need is for those four ground targets to take B. And the tickets will start counting at our favor. So if the guy wants to win, let's force him to turn tails. But three tanks left. Three. Ah, this is a desperate situation. When I do ground attack uh, runs, what I usually do is to go first for the anti-aircraft guns and then for the ground tires as tanks, uh, artillery, whatever. But in this one, we are really, really in very, very uh, bad situation in regards to ground targets. So I'm going to aim for the artillery first. And the P-51D be below me is going to do the same. Uh, why? Because the AA guns can do a lot versus tanks, but the artillery will kill them. Those are anti-tank guns and uh, proper hobbiters. So I come in, kill that artillery, and now there's just anti-aircraft gun left and guns left, <coughs> which is risky. I mean, the usual thing is go for the anti-aircraft first and then for the other ground targets. But look at that, we are down to two. To two. Uh, ground targets. We are down to two tanks. So, well, I see that AA gun was going to be taken out by the P-51. So instead, I focus on that one. And B is now clear for our two tanks to take. There you go. <coughs> and now, look at my fuel. Six minutes left. I'm already cursing myself for I mean, I, I tried and I wanted to load 30 minutes of fuel in takeoff, but I missed it and um, I only came with 20 minutes. So I'm forced to come back to reload. But there you go, the plan worked. The focus one in is coming back. Is he going to try to stop us? Is he going to try to be a fighter and fight? No, he's going to try to go for our tanks. And good luck with that, because the German 20mm he's using, which is stealth ammunition, uh, don't have a lot of armor penetration abilities. So he's going to have a hell of a time trying to get those ground targets. And again, he goes running. He's not trying to use his better plane to kill one of us and to at least stop us from trying to get their ground. No units. He's just running away. If we don't do fast, the I see the P-51 is saying I'll go AAA. The Corsair can look uh, after himself versus that focus on any. And I'm RTB because five minutes and a half of fuel. I simply don't have enough to loiter around a lot. So force that RTB which sucks and stinks but those other guys if they kill the ground targets at sea will have won this uh, the D-13 has to come back and stop them and he's coming back but he's going to try to stop them no he's going to try his luck again versus the ground targets I mean, tanks with those 20 millimeters, yes, of course, you can get one if you're lucky, but in the time he takes by killing all those tanks and while keeping himself clear of that Corsair, uh, we're going to win this. But now we are down to one Ta uh, tank. But what's going to happen? Are we going to lose? Probably, because we only have one tank left. And this sucks, because we deserve the win. We actually deserve the win. The Corsair is pushing as hard as he can versus that uh, D-13 to avoid him uh, killing the ground targets. And he crashes, so we win! <laughs> I fooled you. <laughs> yeah. So this was this was it. This was the 
the fight. And this was the Street Fighter 16 review. Because, I mean, again, I have uh, games with five kills in this plane. They don't represent the plane as good as this video does. I simply missed two or three very good shots, uh, shots I had, so I didn't get just more than one kill. But this plane is fantastic. And the team? Hats off. What a team. Let's see the results. So, well, yeah, you could see that the plane is not bad. <laughs> it's not the plane. It's never the plane, except in some particular cases, which I already said, for instance, the P-38, as it stands right now, the American twin engine fighters, uh, right now is not the pilot, it's the plane. The plane is simply useless as it stands. But in most of the case, in most of the scenarios, it's not the plane, it's the pilot. This plane, I'm not saying it has a, got a perfect flight model, I don't say it performs exactly like the historical one did. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. What I know is that it's an amazing fighter and you can do extremely good with it. So, well, that was it for today's video on the Spitfire Max 16. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, give me, give me the thumbs up. Any comment you want to make in the comment section below. And if you haven't done so yet and you want to see more of this, subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and see you later.